Fred? The title of the message tonight is Ride Troubles to a Better Place. Now, I'm not uh, predicting troubles, but uh, they come. They often, troubles often come to us. And we need to know how to stand and overcome them. Jesus said in John 16, uh, in the world, and we're all in the world, you're going to have tribulation, you're going to have trouble. But he said, be of good cheer, because I've overcome. I found out how to overcome it. I've overcome it. And, and he's going to show us tonight how to overcome trouble. We all uh, face it, and uh, we need to know how to deal with trouble uh, when it comes, and be prepared to overcome. And you have to look at the Bible in the entirety and what the overall perspective is. And so let's think about, uh, we know that trouble is going to come as long as we're in the world, but uh, we can look at uh, 2 Corinthians 1.10, and it says God has delivered us, hmm. is delivering us, and will yet, yet deliver, deliver us. us. I mean. So he has delivered us from trouble in the past. He is delivering us from trouble in this present time, and he will yet deliver us in the future time from trouble. And so that's where we put our trust and assurance. It's in God. And uh, the next verse I want to talk about is 2 Corinthians 2, uh, 14. Uh, now, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus and makes manifest the aroma, Sama. the savor of his aroma, of his knowledge. Okay, so what that says, he always makes us overcome. He makes us victorious. So in Christ Jesus, you are victorious. So I don't care what comes your way, you are victorious. So you can see yourself in one of two different ways. You can see yourself as a victim, or you can see yourself as victorious in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, victor. So I want to show you some strategies tonight on how you can always overcome trouble. We know that in the past, God has delivered us from trouble. Mm -hmm. He's delivering us from trouble. He will always deliver us, and he's making us victorious. And so you are victorious in Jesus Christ, always. I, I like that word, always. Always. Now, I don't care how big the trouble is. It may be little, it may be big, but always you are victorious in Christ over that. And, and so we can take uh, some verses out of context and, and think, well, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to be concerned about it. But what I want to tell you is you need to take a strategy uh, that will always overcome. And so that's what we're going to look at tonight, a strategy mm -hmm. to overcome trouble. And uh, I'd rather say, well, there will never be any trouble. But Jesus has already yeah. said, hey, there, as long as we're in the world, we're going to have trouble. And so we better develop a strategy. We better be ready for it. And when G And Jesus said, be cheerful. Be cheerful, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're going to see that concept over and over again. When trouble comes, are we supposed to get down and depressed? No, rejoice. Why? Hallelujah. Why, why can we rejoice in the face of trouble? Because Jesus lives inside of us, and he's going to show us how to overcome the trouble. In the world, you will have trouble but be of good cheer. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's an important thing to remember. We need to keep our joy, keep mm -hmm. our joy level high. See, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And, and if you get oppressed and depressed uh, when trouble comes, then you don't have that joy. And the joy is of the Lord is your strength. strength so to keep your strength up, you need to be joyful. And so uh, if something comes and it may be bad and it may be big and big and bad, but rejoice, mm -hmm. rejoice because you know 
you have the victory Hallelujah. in Christ Jesus. Amen. Always you have the victory. So I, I want to talk about Romans 5, verses 1 through 5, and I just want to simplify it down. And uh, basically it talks about we have faith, and that faith gives us access to grace. Now, what is grace? Well, it is the power of God, and it's the power of God that's operating in our life, but grace is also the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. because he's the spirit, spirit of, of grace, grace. And, and so what we see is that when you're standing by faith in grace, you're really standing in the presence of the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah! in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and that's how you're able to overcome it's by the standing in the presence of the Holy Spirit, that grace, and he's going to empower you to move forward and to overcome. I use the concept of riding trouble. Uh, so we could just let trouble run over us, or we could get on top of it, and we could take it to a better place so that we get to a better place and use that trouble as a stepping stone mm. to get to a better place. So we're yeah. going to ride it. We're going to, when the trouble comes, you have this attitude. That, that's what this message about tonight is to have the right attitude, that you have a strategy. After tonight, you are going to have a strategy to overcome every trouble. And, and you want to take the trouble when it comes and divert it and ride it to a better place. Hallelujah. Don't let it come and take you down. See, there's a lot of people that face trouble and they, and they just let it run over them. And uh, mm -hmm. th they are a victim. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be a victim. We may have been a victim in the past, mm -hmm. but that's not where we're headed. We are a victor in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. And that's the important point. And so when trouble comes, uh, the, our response, like Jesus said, be a good cheer. Uh, uh, Paul said, rejoice. Oh, hallelujah. Rejoice, and again, I say, say rejoice. rejoice. When the trouble comes, rejoice. A and if that's not enough, rejoice again, rejoice. And so in Romans 5, it says we have access to grace. And it's that grace, that's that bubble. You just think about that. You have a bubble of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with you, and he's empowering you to move forward and overcome anything. Now, when we stand in grace, that's what this passage says, Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. When we stand in grace, and when trouble comes, we're going to, that trouble is going to create something in us. If we're standing in grace, see, as long as we stand in grace, then when the trouble comes, it's going to create some things in us. It's going to work patience. Mm. Wow. Patience. Wow. It, it's going to bring us something good. Mm. Well, when the trouble comes, if we're standing in grace, it's going to cause us to produce patience. And patience will cause us to produce good character. So there's three things I'm going to list here. Patience. Good character, glory to God. That, that's, that's pretty important. And the third one is hope. Now, when we think about hope, hope is for hoping that we can do something that we don't have the natural strength to do. It's about hoping to do the impossible. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what we're doing. And all three of these components are, component, uh, are components of love. God's love, which is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 13. Mm -hmm. And so we begin, if we're standing in grace, we're going to be able to produce some things that lead us to love and, ha and have more love. And, and 1 Corinthians 13 says, love is patient. It defines mm -hmm. love. Love is patient. patient. Love, love is, is kind. kind. Love uh, doesn't hold grudges, doesn't, uh, isn't proud. Uh, it isn't self-seeking, mm -hmm. uh, hopes all things. And so uh, when we encounter a trouble, then if we stand in grace, when we do that by faith, we have access to grace by faith. When we do that, 
then we begin producing the components of love. And then when we get down to verse five of Romans five, Romans five, five, we see that the Holy Spirit puts love in our heart. Hallelujah. So this is about love. It is shed abroad in our hearts. It's by the Holy Spirit. And so this is the principle. And, and, and if you need to go back over this message tonight, look at Romans five verses one through five. And I've simplified it that as long as we stand in grace, by faith, then it's going to produce components of love, and those are patience. Oh, hallelujah. 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 The patience. We need that, and good character, and hope. Hope for a better future. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And then the Holy Spirit will pour love into our hearts. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. a lot of people could just look at that and say, well, love, we have love. The Holy Spirit gives us love. But it's when we go through some things. Yes, amen. <laughs> and all of you have been through some things. Okay. And so when you stand by grace, then that's when you begin to see love produced in your life. The love Hallelujah. of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unconditional love, divine love that's produced in your life when you're standing by grace oh hallelujah and that, in other words you know that the holy spirit is upon you and it's the holy spirit that's empowering you and you're able to do things that in the natural you couldn't do because the holy spirit mm -hmm. is empowering you that's the principle and so what happens in, in this passage what happens when trouble comes it says rejoice hallelujah. rejoice in trouble can, can you can you do that? When you see trouble come, you you open up a, a letter and it's a bill and it's a bigger bill than you expected. Can you rejoice? Can you smile at the devil and say, ha, ha, ha on you, devil. I, I um, overcome you by mm. the blood of Jesus. Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And the word of my testimony. testimony. I'm an overcomer because of Jesus Christ. I'm standing in grace, in a bubble of the Holy Spirit, who is mm -hmm. strengthening me. And, and the reason we rejoice, see, is we keep our strength up. And we're going to a better place. And we're going to ride it to a better place. Amen. We Amen. might not want the trouble to come, and we might not be looking for it, but Jesus said, it's going to come. It, it's it's mm -hmm. just bound to find you. You might hide in a cave, uh, but it'll find you, and uh, uh, when that trouble finds you, you need to rejoice, and then that is a signal to the devil that he's defeated. Hallelujah! Oh, just rejoice. Ha, 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 on you, devil. You are defeated. Okay, that's the principle. Rejoice when you see trouble come. Stand in the presence of the Holy Spirit in grace that's just a bubble and he empowers you to go through the trouble and then produce these three things produce patience good character mm. hallelujah and hope hallelujah. that you can do anything all things are possible to you because you believe that that's the basic message and so uh, <laughs> i want to give an application of it here now and the application is in uh, Genesis, and it goes uh, about uh, several chapters, and it's following the man, Joseph. He's a young teenager, mm -hmm. and his father gives him a, uh, a coat of many colors because he favors Joseph. He has uh, uh, 12 sons, but he favors his one son, Joseph. and. Uh, and Joseph has a couple of dreams, and he he has the dreams that he's going to be a ruler, and uh, mm -hmm. he, he goes and tells his brothers that he's going to be a ruler over them, and the brothers are not happy, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so they take him off and throw him in a pit. They throw him in a pit. That sounds like trouble. Yes. So let's see if we find trouble in Joseph's life. Now, he had a dream he's going to be a ruler, but he faced trouble. Yes. And he got thrown into a pit, and then he got sold to 
Ishmaelites, they, they took him down to Egypt, sold him into slavery. That sounded like trouble. And then uh, he was sold to this uh, Egyptian man named Potiphar. And uh, Potiphar had a, a wife mm -hmm. that was unfaithful and uh, she wanted to, to mess around with, yeah. with Joseph. And Joseph, <laughs> listen to this. This is important. Good character. He had good character. Mm -hmm. He held on to his integrity. See, it'd be real easy at that point for him to just give in to the world and, and do what the world's doing. But he didn't do that. He kept his integrity and because God was with him. He had that bubble of the Holy Spirit and the grace mm -hmm. upon him. He had that bubble. He was in that bubble. He was, he was producing some things. He was mm -hmm. producing patience. And he, because see, he wasn't at a place where he could take another man's wife. He was being patient uh, to wait for his own wife. And, and then he had good character. Uh, he was showing integrity and, and faithfulness uh, to God. And uh, he didn't do what the woman wanted him to do. And he had hope. For the future. Hallelujah. He was, he was producing those three things just like Romans 5 talks about. And what did it, it what happened and what did that produce for him? More trouble. He got <laughs> put into prison. Okay, so let's look at this man. Mm -hmm. he, first, he was put in a pit. That sounded like trouble. Then he was sold into slavery. That sounded like trouble. And, and uh, he, and he had a woman after him. He had a woman after him. <laughs> that sounds like trouble. And uh, now when he was sold into slavery at Potiphar's house, Potiphar knew the favor of God was upon him. And he knew he was a diligent person and knew Joseph was a diligent person. So he put everything uh, under his charge and over his. And so he was in charge of everything in mm. Potiphar's house. And uh, so he was already a ruler. So he was a ruler. And then he got thrown into prison. Again, that sounds like trouble. Uh, and all he was doing, listen to this. All he was doing was being who he was and doing the best he could do. So be who you are and do the best you can do. Amen. Glory to God, because people will recognize the favor of God is upon you. And it may cause more trouble. And that's what happened to uh, Joseph. He was thrown into prison. But the, pri the person over the prison recognized, oh, the favor of God, God is, is upon him. him. God is with him. And God is with him. And even in trouble, God was with him. And he put Joseph in charge of the uh, all the prisoners and, and uh, what, Hallelujah. what they received. It was by Joseph. And so he was put in, he was learning rulership in, in all of this. Okay. And, and then while he's in prison, while he's in prison, the Pharaoh got upset with a couple of his employees. One was his baker and one was his butler. And so he threw them in prison. And while they were in prison, uh, they had a dream. And Joseph said, I can interpret dreams. Oh, hallelujah. And so he interpreted their dreams. And he said, now, when you, when the Pharaoh uh, reinstates you to your office, you remember me. I'm just a young person. I was sold here. I hadn't done anything to get here. And, and so remember me. And, and so the uh, butler uh, got out. He, he was the person that poured wine for the Pharaoh. And uh, pretty, he forgot Joseph. Again, that sounded like trouble. <laughs> he, he, Joseph had a lot of trouble. <laughs> but then one day, the Pharaoh had some dreams. And, and then the butler remembered, oh, there is a young man uh, in prison that can interpret dreams. And so he went up there. Uh, the Pharaoh sent for him and brought him up. And he interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. And uh, the dream and what Joseph interpreted was that there was going to be a drought there for seven years mm -hmm. in Egypt and, and they needed somebody to store up the grain. And, and the Pharaoh said, well, who do we know that has a good spirit that can rule 
uh, in this land and store up the grain for seven years. And he said, well, it must be Joseph because he's got a good spirit. Can you imagine going through all those things and, and being recognized for having a good spirit? Now, let's go back and review his life for a minute. Bunch of trouble, 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 trouble. So when he was sold into the pit, uh, when he was put thrown in the pit, then he was uh, sold to the Ishmaelites, and then he was sold into slavery. And if any of those things hadn't happened, if he hadn't experienced all of those troubles, he would not have gotten to the point where he could have been a ruler in Egypt. See, he had to get down to Egypt. He, he was up in another land. He was in Israel, right, in, the right, right. in the land of Israel. He had he, he rode, glory to God. Hallelujah. He rode to where he needed to be. God said, you're going to be a ruler. Well, he had to, mm -hmm. he had to go from where he was to the land he was going to be a ruler in. And, and so God made a way for him to go there. He went with these uh, camel uh, uh, people with the camels, and they went down there, and he was <laughs> sold into slavery uh, to Potiphar's house. Now, if he hadn't been uh, sold into slavery into Potiphar's house, he never would have met Potiphar's wife. And Potiphar's wife uh, had him thrown into prison. And if he hadn't met Potiphar's wife, hadn't been, the Lord hadn't been with him and, and uh, he hadn't had the favor of God upon him and he hadn't produced integrity, then he wouldn't have gone to prison. It would have been easy for him to avoid prison. Would have been easy. Let me say that again. It would have been easy for him to avoid prison, but he kept his integrity. And the Potiphar's wife had him thrown into prison. Okay, but he had to go to prison. He had to go to prison where he could interpret some dreams of a butler and a baker of Pharaoh. And so that, and they had to tell him, he had to tell them, I interpret dreams. So he had to tell people who he was. Uh, he had to tell his brothers, oh, I'm going to be a ruler. Yeah. If see if he hadn't told his brothers, I'm going to be a ruler. This is what God says about me. If he hadn't said that, they wouldn't have thrown him in the pit. So he had to tell the brothers, I'm going to be a ruler, and I'm going to be and a you're ruler. You're going to bow down to me. I'm going to be a ruler over you, and you're going to bow down. If he hadn't said, see, remember our our resolutions at the beginning of the year. We have to confess our faith. Ooh, and we, hallelujah. That's good, Fred. That's and good. we have to confess what we're hoping for. Amen. So here Joseph is. He's confessing what he's hoping for to become a ruler. Hallelujah. And a ruler over his brothers. And uh, they get, if he hadn't told them that, they would have left him alone. He would have stayed there with his father and he would not have ridden uh, the trouble oh, down to Egypt. Oh, wow. Wow. <clears throat> and so if any of these troubles hadn't existed if they didn't throw him in the pit he wouldn't have gotten to egypt if they didn't uh, if those people hadn't carried him down to egypt and they hadn't sold him into slavery he wouldn't have he wouldn't have been in a in egypt and moving up to become ruler in egypt so Hallelujah. all of Hallelujah. these things were instrumental in his becoming ruler in Egypt and over the people of Egypt. Hallelujah. It all played together. And you think about your life. Well, you've had this trouble and you've had that trouble. Well, have they fit together? Oh, they fit together only if you rejoice when they come, you stand in grace, and you hold on to your integrity, and you produce patience and you have hope for the impossible. Oh, that's good, Freddie. That's good. That's and it all, they all fit together. And if any one of those things had not happened in Joseph's life, he, he would still be there in slavery until he died. <clears throat> or even gone up to the prison. <clears throat> he could easily have stayed in the prison until his death. If he just sat there in a corner and said, woe is me. Oh, how, what a terrible injustice yes. uh, has happened to me. Yes, this, look what's happened to this me. This is unfair. Mm. <laughs> you mm. know, I, I think a lot about uh, my granddaughter when she was uh, 
young girl in uh, in uh, elementary school, she'd say, well, this thing happened and it was unfair. And that thing happened and it was unfair. That was really, she wanted things to be fair. But let me tell you, in the world, things are not fair. No, they're not they're not fair. They, uh, what happened to Joseph? None of that was fair. But what was it? God was with him. Yes. Hallelujah. In the world, you will have trouble. trouble. That's not fair. It's not fair. The world is not fair. It's not going to treat you fair. In the world, you will have trouble. But rejoice. And again, I say, say rejoice. rejoice. When Hallelujah. the trouble comes, get ready for it overcome it, ride it to a better place, uh, ride it to a better place. Because if you let, uh, if you let it run over you, it'll destroy you. Yes, but if I you am. say, hey, I am an overcomer in Christ Jesus, and I'm going to ride this trouble to a better place. That's what Joseph was thinking, because he was just staying right there with God, and God was with him. He had a bubble on him, a grace bubble of grace and you have a bubble of grace upon you you mm -hmm. stand mm -hmm. in grace hallelujah. hallelujah and you rejoice when the trouble comes and, and you produce the fruit of the spirit and, and you keep your integrity and you have a hope for a better future and a better place and ride the trouble to a better place in your life mm -hmm. and that's what joseph did he wrote it Amen. he wrote it uh, and wrote it and wrote it and he never gave up and he never let it overcome him he never let it uh beat him down he just kept on being who he was doing the best he could do what a simple uh plan it was just to be who he was and do the best he could and that's uh, all god is asking of you be who you are, be who you are, and do the best you can in whatever situation comes mm. because you are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. You are an overcomer. Mm. And so let's look at what Joseph said. What Joseph said, and this is Genesis 50 20. I call it the 50 20 rule. <laughs> they meant it for evil, but God meant it for, for good. good. Amen. Woo, let me say it again. Woo! This is the 50-20 rule. Genesis 50-20. They meant it for evil. God meant it, it for good. good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he's going to take what comes your way and turn it to good. That's what uh, uh, Romans 8, 28 yes. Amen. Uh, Amen. says, that uh, uh, all things work, work together, together for, for the those, good yes. of those who love the, the Lord, Lord and are called according to his purpose. purpose. But there, you know, there's a verse uh, that comes before that, and it's about the Holy Spirit. He said, we don't know, verses 26 and 27 of Romans 8, said, we don't know how to pray, but the Holy Spirit's Spirit. praying yes. for us. Yes. You have to recognize the Holy Spirit is working on your behalf. He's interceding for you, and, and he's putting a bubble on you, and that bubble is grace, and, and when you stand in that, and you say, I don't care what comes, I'm going to stand in grace, Amen. then you overcome, Hallelujah. then you produce the fruit of the Spirit, then you hold on to your integrity, then you have a hope for a better place and a better future. Ooh, hallelujah, see, hallelujah. See, I'm going to run around. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph <laughs> said in, in uh, Genesis 45, uh, verse 8, he said, uh, uh, you men evil. <laughs> it was, he's talking to his brothers, and, and they men evil. And, but he said, God sent me down here mm -hmm. to save these people, to save people. Mm -hmm. And he made me, God made me father to Pharaoh. Oh, hallelujah. Lord over his uh, mm -hmm. uh, Lord over his household and ruler over all of Egypt. You hear that? Let me say it again. God made me father to Pharaoh, mm -hmm. Lord of his household, and ruler over all of Egypt. But he had to ride, and so he rode in the chariot. He mm -hmm. rode in the chariot as the ruler, as ruler yes. over Egypt, a and but he had to ride to get there. He was a long ways off and he had a lot of trouble facing him and he rode that trouble to a better place, a better place. 
and a better place. Oh, hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. That's the same thing that you and I can do. We 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 can ride when the trouble comes. And I, I hope it I hope you get by without trouble. But Jesus said you would have trouble. Yeah, yeah. So be cheerful, be rejoicing. Trouble will come, but rejoice. Hold on to your strength yes. and stand in that bubble of grace, be empowered to overcome it and produce faith, keep your integrity high and glory to God. Have a hope for a better place yeah. and a better future. You know, there's another uh, passage that, that talks about this and that's, uh, and, and I'm bringing this to closure, uh, but 2 Corinthians 4 verses 17 and 18 talks about uh, this momentary light affliction, or I could say this trouble, mm -hmm. it's just for a season. It's just here for a little time, but it's going to work something far, far greater, greater. Uh -huh. far greater glory of God. Uh, but listen to me, listen to this verse. While we look at the things that are not seen, yes, look at the things that are not seen. Not now while we're looking at the things that are seen. Now, what kind of things are seen? Well, the problems. We see yeah, the problems. Yeah. But we're supposed to look at the things that are not seen. And what's not seen is the Holy Spirit. It's our faith. It's heaven. It's the heaven intervening in our life. It's bringing forth heaven in our situation. Uh, look at the eternal things. While we're looking at eternal things, we're holding on to our integrity and we're standing in the bubble of grace in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we're communicating with the Holy Spirit. While we're looking at these eternal things, that trouble is just going to last for a short time, and it's going to work something better in us when we ride it to a better place. Thank you for being here.